Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a couple little things with the 1001PX. We're going to start out by looking at the original operating system that was on this computer and explore some other operating systems along the way. But anyways, I hope you, you all enjoy the video and I will see you in the video. Have a good time. So, you might be wondering what version of uh, Windows we are running. We're running Windows 7 Starter. This was a fourth edition that wasn't really available to everyone. It wasn't able to be downloaded from or bought from Microsoft. Windows 7 Starter was only available on netbooks. Some of the things that you were missing from Windows 7 Starter, you were not able to use any type of arrow specific themes you also along with that couldn't change the background at all you were stuck with the one that came with it which as you can see is a kind of a pretty background so it kind of works out multi-monitor support was also not available dvd playback was completely not available and one of the last things that i'll mention here is that xp mode the little virtual machine that microsoft would give you for my, uh, people migrating from xp to windows 7 was completely gone from windows 7 starter this was a very portable version of windows 7 that really was made to kind of get netbook mac manufacturers off of xp and onto windows 7 and it was just a very limited um operating system it was very good for what microsoft wanted it for which was netbooks mainly it's like chrome os or ipad os where it's like very very basic it's very very you you could do what you need to with this but it's very limited what you can do now you might be wondering well what can you do with it then well Microsoft actually included Solitaire and they included MS Paint and WordPad and uh, all the games as well with this computer. And it, yeah, it might be very, very limited, but they did include a lot of the basic Windows things. So you still get the benefit of being able to run EXEs. So you could run Firefox or like very, very low end games. Another thing that was included was Purple Place. Purple Place is always like a fascinating game which is like kind of a weirdly educational kind of game but it was developed for windows vista but included in windows vista and windows 7 and is included in windows 7 starter of the things that we can use with these old netbooks or old computers in general is Linux. Linux is very nice with being able to support a lot of older hardware and hardware that isn't the newest thing. Is it going to be smooth all the time? No. Sometimes it could run worse than older Windows versions depending on the version you get. I first off wanted to try Xubuntu just to be able to see if it would work and just to be able to explore a different version version of Ubuntu that I am not particularly familiar with. Fortunately, as you will see, it didn't go exactly to plan. So now we're a little bit more booted up. Things are kind of going a little slug sluggishly and I'm getting a little nervous about the performance of this operating system on this computer. Kind of hoping that everything works out well, but we try and install nevertheless. Things start going a little worse. It gets slower and slower and slower and
Well, it crashes. I recorded a couple more segments, but I won't bore you with all that. Over and over and over, it kept crashing and not working. So unfortunately, I had to resort to another version. And that version is Debian. My only familiarity with Debian is uh, when it broke my MacBook. <laughs> I was trying to make a video and it didn't work out and my, that MacBook no longer boots. <laughs> I first off decided to use 32-bit Debian on this netbook because this processor could support 64-bit, but being that it only has one gig of RAM and maximum two gigabytes of RAM, it's not the most friendly. However, 32-bit isn't as supported anymore, so it's kind of a weird kind of situation. So, yeah. So oh, we're starting the install now. The boot up went perfectly fine. The beginning of the install has been going pretty smoothly. We're gonna choose like a language and choose the keyboard and all of that. So yeah. Now it is preparing to install. Install. Now it is the preparation. Probably will ask more questions though. More questions, oh yeah. Look, more questions. <laughs> so we're going to have to decide like what drive and how do we want the specific drive to be handled. And then I decided to do something a little bit special that I've been kind of thinking about. I wanted to try separating the home partition because a lot of Linux's, Linux I? Linux is. I don't know. Some people recommend to change the partition of the home partition so it's separate. So say if you want to reinstall your OS, you don't have to get rid of your home partition. So yeah, you could do that or you could have it in one. Here's the main thing I did kind of mention at the beginning of this. I really have not really used vanilla Debian. So if there's mistakes that I do or little things that I do that's kind of weird, I apologize. This is a learning process. This is a learning process for me. Also take everything I say with like a little grain of salt. Sometimes I make mistakes here or on here. And um, if I do in the comment section, I will try and correct them. Or if you see a mistake and you want to correct me, go ahead comment down below and tell me if I did something wrong. I am never offended by uh, constructive criticism, as long as it's constructive. So yeah. Now we have to choose which type of desktop environment we want to use. I personally chose in this video XFCE, which is a very good one for lower end computers. There are other ones that are really good as well, but I personally chose XFCE because I'm the most familiar with it. You all might have chosen a different one and hey, in the comment section down below, um, I might do this again with Debian. Um, so tell me which type of desktop environment you would want me to see me try and use. I could use GNOME Flashback or Mate or uh, LXDE or LXQT. It just really depends.
we're just installing the, the grub bootloader. I did get a little confused of the wording on this section, but I did figure it out. So that's kind of easy. Just basically just put it to the correct drive <laughs> and it will just do, uh, do it because you could put it to like a removable drive if you wanted to or do it some other way. So yeah. And now the installation is completed. We are going to just try and reboot, see if it works. And it did work. It's just loading in the menus right now, just to be able to see the stuff. Let's explore it a little bit. Let's see what it's kind of like. Kind of like not super duper, like different from anything else I've used before, but hey, that's okay. It does have a uh, Firefox ESR on it. It does have some Libre Office type stuff on it. As has some, it has some media stuff. Nothing super duper like out there. And yeah, just a little bit of exploring just to see that. Now, as requested by someone in my comment section from last time, we are going to play a little bit of a game on here. Is, can this netbook play a lot of things? No. But something I did come across, and uh, thank you, Michael MJD, for the inspiration. I was watching one of your videos the day I recorded this, and I saw the, the game, and I was like, that would be perfect. <laughs> We're going to be playing Classic Cube on this. Classic Cube, if you did not know, is a sandbox block game inspired by other such sandbox block games. That's exactly what it says on itch.io. Oh, Classic Cube is a very like basic kind of like early days kind of Minecrafty vibes, but it is a very efficient game that does run very efficiently on older hardware and does support a lot of old hardware. This is a perfect example of what it can do. I decided in here to actually build a little house, so that's what I did. But yeah, it's, it's just a cool little basic kind of block game, nothing too exciting. It's all creative mode. There's no flying though, unless you do a specific type of mode to get flying. So yeah. And this is uh, the house that I built, kind of basic. There's no stairs or anything like that. So you just kind of have basic kind of vibe from it, but that's okay. That's all right.
nevertheless, that is the 1001 PX, the number two episode on it. I am really happy with this little netbook. It's it's trying. It is trying. Some weird issues with the netbook. I am going to try and figure out what is causing those weird issues, but I am thinking I'm going to actually try Pop! OS, the most recent alpha version of Pop! OS. Um, so that will be a couple videos from now, but that's okay. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, a uh, like down below would always help. But if you didn't like this video, the dislike button is always there for those people who did not like it and just wanted to. I have really enjoyed making this video. These videos are a little more complex to make, so I'm, so I'm sorry if it takes a little bit longer to make them. But nevertheless, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your evening, day, and night. And I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.